State. William J. for the state. James Owens for Sarah Boone. Ma'am, good morning. Can you state your full name and date of birth for the record for me? Right, Ms. Boone is seated at council's table wearing a dark gray suit and a yellow blouse. Um, she is in custody. However, she is not being shackled uh, for the purposes of the trial based on the court's prior findings. Uh, we're here to conclude the uh, objections as identified in the state's response to defendant's fifth amended reciprocal discovery exhibit list. The court has reviewed the objections and the defendant's fifth amended reciprocal discovery exhibit list. Anything else we need to address state before we begin addressing those objections? Judge, I do not see a written order from yesterday's rulings on the clerk's website. Um, I'm just, I want to make sure I am crystal clear as to what the court has said is going to occur during the trial regarding opening statements by either party and so on and so forth so that I am not in violation of any motions in limine or any case law uh, that um, presides over what I can say or not say. Okay. Madam Clerk. Were you anticipating a written order on the motions in limine? I felt like I heard you say everything that I anticipated was going to be put at least on court minutes um, by the clerk's office. Um, I wasn't anticipating you to type a written. Okay, that's what I want a clarification on. Thank you. But I, I, I just do want crystal clear clarification as to what we are both doing. Because uh, based on that, I, I have some things that I would like to get on the record for post-conviction matters. Sure. All right. Madam Clerk is, is pulling up the file now, sir. Give us a moment. <clears throat> you did not. Okay. Madam Clerk has advised that court minutes were not prepared for the ruling from yesterday due to it taking place during the trial and jury selection. So digital was not providing recording services yesterday. So it would have been Madam Court Reporter. So I would have to beg and plead uh, if she's able to get me a copy of what it was so that it can be re-reviewed so that we're all on the same page for that. Thank you. Madam Court Reporter, how long do you think that would take you? Um, this Is that acceptable? Can we address it at 1.30 before we come? Uh, Makes it very difficult to prepare for opening statements when I don't know what I can say. I, no, I agree with you, and I'm not trying to, you know, submarine anybody or put anybody in an inappropriate box. But I understand, but I, I need to know what I'm going to be allowed to say. I don't disagree. But is 130 acceptable? No. Okay. Well, then, short of taking a break right now and having her create it, I don't know what else to tell you. Can we finish jury selection? Mr. Henderson is going to take a minute. Um, this after, I guess we start at 1030 or 11. And that's going to go, that's going to spill into like early late afternoon before we actually get a jury pick. And we just agree on Friday morning starting opening statements. That gives her time, them time, me time. State? We have an out of state witness and people that are, are scheduled to come in. Um, so we do see problems with that. Okay. I don't know how long jury selection is going to take this morning. I can't recall off the top of my head how much time the state said, or the defense said they were going to need for the purposes of their questioning. So, Mr. Henderson, how much time do you think you're going to need, sir? Hour and a half, two tops. Okay. And then we've got a good breach, jurors, Correct. That's correct. So that's going to take. Okay. Mr. J. I, I just need that ruling so that with enough time to prepare. I, I understand. So the way I see it is we've got a couple of options. We can, and there's no good way to cut this up. 
One, we can wait on the objections, which I know you do not want to do. Or we can stop now. Madam Clerk, Madam Court Reporter can provide a rough draft of what was ordered yesterday. And we could go over it and review it, make sure that we're all on the same page as to what the court's ruling orally was yesterday as to the various motions in limine. Then we can continue with jury selection, or then we can pick up, up with the objections. I'm amenable to however it is you want to proceed. I understand your concerns of running afoul with a motion in limine. I totally understand that. But it will take her some time to prepare this. I'm, I'm fine with either letting her do that now or letting her do that after we argue this hopefully last pending motion in limine, um, but prior to getting into jury selection so that um, I have time to rework what my opening statement will be based on the ruling during Mr. Henderson's voir dire. Let me then ask this question. Assuming we get a jury this afternoon, what are the concerns with starting tomorrow morning with openings? Is it due to out-of-state witnesses that may be unavailable or because of their schedules? I feel like if we have time, we should at least get into preliminary instructions and opening statements and use every waking moment we have to not waste these jurors' times until 5 o'clock today. Okay. All right. Madam Court Reporter, how long do you think it would take you? Is that acceptable as opposed to in print? She could go back and pull back the audio from and re-review it and just provide it to us now? Sure. Okay. All right. Then we'll take a short recess. Just let us know when you're prepared to give us that ruling, and then we'll go from there. Anything else we need to discuss before we take this brief recess? No, Your Honor. Thank you. State or uh, Ms. Rowans? Madam Clerk, so three minutes. No, not that long. Excuse me? No, not that long. Okay. How long do you think? 10, 15, 20? Okay, great. All right, we'll be in recess till 945. Thank you. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Yes, sir. One thing, because there was another motion filed by Yes. I think it would have some impact uh, in open statement, of course. So if we deal with that now, that would probably help. You're talking about the motion limit regarding anticipation of affirmatively, affirmatively pled intent to use battered spouse syndrome evidence? Correct. Fine. Okay. And just to make it quick. Okay, well, that saves me some time then, so I appreciate that. Um, all right, so do you have any objection then, Mr. Henderson, to the granting of the state's motion in limine, which would allow the state to be able to outline in opening statements and present evidence in the state's case in chief in anticipation of the use of the battered spouse syndrome defense at trial? No objection. All right, motion's granted. All right, we'll be in a brief recess till um, um, 9.45. We're off the record. Thank you. All right, we're back on the record. Case number 2020-CF-2603, State of Florida versus Sarah Boone. We get appearances for the state. Steve Hedstrom, half the state. Jay for the state. James Owen, Sarah Boone. Tony Anderson, Sarah Boone. Mr. Henderson, Sarah Boone. Okay, Ms. Boone is seated at council's table wearing the same clothing from this morning. Ms. Boone, uh, a third of your defense team is not present at the moment. Are you amenable to proceeding without Mr. Beck being here? Okay, thank you very much. Well, that cures itself. Counselor? Thank you. Record reflect that Mr. Beck has just entered the courtroom. All right, the courts had the opportunity to review the excerpts from the motion in limine hearing from yesterday. And my understanding is both the state and the defense were provided copies of same. Mr. Jay, is that accurate? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Owens, is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Um, the courts reviewed it. Are there any questions with regards to the court's rulings on that motion? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Um, my understanding is that based on... Uh... Judge, was it emailed to us? Sure. I, I didn't know. <laughs> Madam Clerk's providing you a printed copy, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Bless you.
Have you had the opportunity to review that excerpt yet, Mr. Owens? No, sir. All right, go ahead and take a look at it. Okay. All right, Mr. Jay, you may proceed. Thank you, Judge. Uh, we are referring to a rough draft uh, printout that the court reporter made. It's four pages of uh, part of your rulings from, there were several motions yesterday, but in this one, uh, it's on page one, lines uh, 22 through 24. Um, part of the court's ruling was it's indisputable that an overt act needs to be provided under the Holland case by the Florida Supreme Court prior to battered spouse syndrome evidence coming in. Um, and perhaps the state wasn't clear in its request, and I apologize if I was not um, in our motion, though. But page paragraph 24 of the state's motion includes um, a quote from the Holland case. However, before a defendant may introduce evidence of the victim's character, he must first show that there was an overt act by the victim at or about the time of the incident that reasonably indicated a need for self-defense Holland versus State, 916, Southern 2nd, 750, page 760 of that opinion, a Florida Supreme Court case from 2005, which was quoting Quintana, Q-U-I-N-T-A-N-A versus State, 452, Southern 2nd, 98, page 100, a Florida 1st DCA case from 1984, also quoting Williams versus State, 252, Southern 2nd, 243, 246 is the page, Florida 4th DCA, 1971, Reed, R-E-I-D versus State, 213, Southern 3rd, 1110 at page 1111, Florida 5th DCA, 2017, Rudin versus State, 182, Southern 3rd, 724 at page 726, Florida 1st DCA, 2015. So what we were asking for in, is in addition to the battered spouse syndrome expert testimony to not be mentioned prior to an overt act being laid was any uh, evidence of the victim's character, including reputation or prior bad acts. We apologize if that was not clear since the motion is titled the battered spouse syndrome evidence, but um, the, the backbone and basis of that back, battered spouse syndrome is obviously prior bad acts by the victim. So. We are seeking a pretrial ruling as well on the admission of uh, prior bad acts, specific bad acts, or reputation evidence of the decedent. Thank you. Response. I just have one question as to what time. Are we talking about for dire? Are we talking about opening statement? At what time are we talking about? During the testimony of the trial. That was my takeaway. Okay. He's absolutely correct. Okay. Then the motion's granted. So the court's going to rely on that specific excerpt uh, in Holland, 916 Southern 2nd, 750, at pinpoint 760 through 761. Beginning with, as a general rule, evidence of a victim's character is inadmissible to prove actions in conformity with it on a particular occasion, section 90.4041, Florida statutes. However, when a claim of self-defense is raised, a defendant may introduce evidence of a victim's character to establish who the aggressor was or that the defendant was apprehensive of the victim at the time of the homicide, internal citations omitted. However, before a defendant may introduce evidence of the victim's character, he must first show that there was an, quote, overt act by the bracket's victim, end bracket, at or about the time of the bracket incident, end bracket, that reasonably indicated a need for bracket self-defense, end bracket, internal citations omitted. That's the standard. So uh, hearing no objection from the defense, the motion will be granted. Judge, and, uh, just understand, I'm clear on the record, uh, it's 
<coughs> procedurally correct. Procedurally, before we can put evidence of that, there has to be a claim of self-defense. That has to come from someone. And in this case, we all know that has to come from the Received and understood. Any other clarifications for the purposes of opening or uh, trial based on the court's oral rulings on the state's motions in limine yesterday? No, Your Honor. And then the only other thing that the beg uh, of the clerk of the court um, and the court is just that we can have some written rulings, even if it's just minutes from all the motions that were ruled upon yesterday at some point for the record for the 6 DCA. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Anything further uh, from the state before we proceed with the objections? Okay. Defense. Judge, yes. Just my overall understanding is that the motions uh, and the orders that the court has to apply to trial and the organization or the flow of the evidence at trial. Certain things have to be That is correct, and the court ruled specifically on that yesterday. And that's in the excerpt that was provided to you and your co-counsel. All right, thank you. Um, I also believe part of the court's ruling was that the testimony uh, that was proffered, the expected testimony of the defendant that was given to the experts, um, I believe the court's position was if that is the testimony, then that is not an overt act. The court's... Statements yesterday speak for themselves. I'm not going to rehash that matter today. Anything else, Mr. J? Anything else, defense? All right, let's proceed with these objections. The court, again, has had the opportunity to review that Fifth Amendment reciprocal discovery exhibit list filed by the uh, defense, um, I believe, back on October the 2nd or the 3rd. And the court uh, was provided yesterday the actual exhibit list itself and the state's response and objections to same. Um, there's no need to go over the items for which the state has no objections. So state, I would ask you just to you know, provide um, as to the ones that you have objections for, and I have notes with regard to all of them. So you may proceed, sir. One by one, I assume? I think that's the easiest way to go. You know, I know we start with item one and then go to three, four, et cetera. So I just, we can ping pong it back and forth from there. All right, regarding item number one on the fifth amended reciprocal discovery exhibit list from the defendant, I do not believe we have received those records. Response from the defense. You're referring to 1A1? One one? We're referring to 1. One. 1A one is all the state's evidence that you believe you can use, and I, I label that as paragraph zero in my response. So specifically talking about your paragraph that you labeled one, certified medical records from Advent Health Orlando, paren, not yet received by the defense, paren. Um, it's not yet received by the state, paren. The defense has not received those records. Okay. Motions, or the objection is sustained. Moving to three. Are these the 550 pages that we addressed yesterday? My belief, and again, none of the exhibits are, are numbered as, as they get disclosed to the state. They're not Bates numbered. I, I do that myself. But what I have and what I believe is states two was 81 pages of records regarding uh, treatment uh, yeah. by... Uh, I'm not talking about two. You don't object to two. Talk about three? Well, I, I, I do need to talk about two now because okay. um, this morning... Uh, after having previously already been given 81 pages of records that purport to be from Winter Park Advent Health regarding treatment of Sarah Boone over a variety of different dates spanning 2018 to 2020. After having received those, reviewed those, and made my decision on um, not objecting, this morning I was given um, a thumb drive from the defense which contained 119 JPEGs rather than a single PDF with 119 pages. A JPEG, for the record, is a digital picture. Um, they were upside down, they were sideways. I, I, I got them all formatted. 
I was able to read them while we were waiting for Madam Court Reporter. They do not appear to be completely the same as what has been previously provided by the defendant in regards to Winter Park's advent health treatment of Ms. Boone. So I just want to be clear that now, since the state's response, there has been some sort of change um, in what those records purport to be. And we are objecting, we are requesting a Richardson hearing regarding the 119 JPEGs that we were provided this morning um, in regards to uh, defendant's exhibit number two. At this court point in time, the court is going to proceed with a Richardson hearing. Defense? Judge, uh, referring to our paragraph two, the defense fifth amendment was a little discovery exhibit. Correct. My understanding, based on what Mr. J just provided, and based on his response is that there were 81 pages provided to the state on or about September 27, 2024. The state had no objection to those. The state further identified that this morning a thumb drive of 119 JPEGs evidencing something else was provided. And under the mandates of the 6th District Court of Appeal, based on Young v. State 369 Southern 3rd 1243, I am required to conduct a Richardson hearing. The court is conducting a Richardson hearing at this time. Just the 81 pages that were provided. The 81 pages are not at issue. I that they were given, they were given uh, Sarah Boone from the uh, Advent Health Court. The 119 pages, my understanding is we thought we had sent them previously. We realized yesterday or last night that we had not sent them. So we provided those to the state as soon as we were aware and what do the 119 pages evidence? They're medical records from the hospital relating to Sarah Boone over a period of time. So obviously that's going to be whittled down depending on her testimony and whether or not it would cooperate. Her testimony that she suffered an injury at the hands of George Torres. I need more specifics than that. I don't have a time frame. I don't have when. I don't have what. Well, it's going to have to be matched up with the, the dates that she was injured, which would coincide with the... But that all goes to the irrelevancy issue. We're conducting a Richardson hearing at this time. So I need to address the inadvertence or willfulness of the discovery. I need to address whether it was trivial or substantial. And if I don't know what's in these 119 pages, it's difficult for the court to determine whether or not this is a trivial or substantial matter. Are these items that were previously produced in the 81 pages? Are they different? Are they different events? Are they different injuries? Are they different things? Moreover, I need to make a determination as to whether this violation had an impact on the ability for the state to properly prepare for trial. Those are the three prongs that I need to address. When did you receive them last week? I'm not sure, Judge. I have to get my secretary. Uh, we have to take a break and let me find out from my secretary when we receive them. Okay. 
I'm going to continue with the balance of the objections, and we'll circle back on the issue with regard to this objection so that you can provide when, where, how, what. My staff is Understood. texting her. All right. so we'll, I'll make a note to circle back to this issue. Moving to number three, is this the, the Advent Health Winter Park Jorge, not yet received by the defense. State's response reveals a motion in limine was filed regarding this motion. Is that the 550 pages that we addressed yesterday? Yes, Your Honor. The state still has not received a whittled down uh, exhibit that they plan to introduce at trial. Okay. The court ruled on that yesterday regarding the blood alcohol content records and the narrative would be admissible. I'm still waiting for those particular pages to, to be disclosed to the state. Okay. The exact pages that those yes. The BAC and the That's what's going to be offered into evidence at this point in time. Appreciate it. So, as with regard to the state's objection to item three that was previously ruled upon yesterday, is that the same with regard to the state's objection as to item number five, certified medical records, Advent Health, Ultimate Springs, George? I believe so. Without being able to tell. Advent Health, it, it, it just seems to all come from Altamont Springs, the records. Um, so I, I believe that is all encompassing, but um, so we don't have an objection other than the ones previously noted for three and five. Okay, thank you. Moving now to item number six, certified um, medical records, Orange County Jail not yet received by the defense. I'm assuming they also have not yet been received by the state. I, I think, did we address number four? We went from three to five? Oh, I apologize. You're correct. Or certified medical records, Advent Health, Altamont Springs, Sarah, not yet received by the defense. I'm assuming also then state you have not received them. I believe the only records until this morning that I had was the 81 pages from Winter Park disclosed on September 27th, 2024. I, if, if there is something that they have from Advent Health, Altamont Springs, I, I don't believe I have that. Defense. Judge, we have not yet received those records. We, we had Sarah Boone sign a medical release, and we, we have sent requests to the various medical facilities asking for records, and we're just waiting on response. The objection is sustained. Moving to six, certified medical records, Orange County Jail not yet received by the defense. I'm assuming they have not yet been received by the state either. Last night, after business hours, I received 382 pages of jail records regarding the Zoom. Once again, I had to spend my personal time reviewing these records. Of the 382 pages, probably fewer than 5% uh, refer to her mental health and the psychiatric uh, treatment uh, that gets provided to inmates at the Orange County Jail. The other 95 plus percent of these records is all about physical treatment, COVID tests, um, things I won't outline here uh, unnecessarily since I do not believe these records will come in, but all of the things that you would expect um, a middle-aged inmate uh, to have to go through for the course of four years. The state uh, just is having great difficulty understanding what, if any, pages of these records are relevant. Um, on page 135, um, there's records from part of her intake procedure on February 26th, 2020. On page 137, that's the initial screening when she came into the jail on February 25th, 2020. Um, page 
137 and 138 include this initial intake screening. Um, but from there, we get pretty far removed in time, um, pretty far removed in relevance. And so the state is objecting to the introduction of these records. Um, even, even her intake screening on uh, pages 135 through 138, I don't understand the relevancy of it. Um, she indicates panic symptoms. She's semi-cooperative, has poor insight, unrealistic expectations, wants holistic treatment, doesn't like being housed alone. Uh, the screening on 225 um, goes through alcohol abuse, yes, type, spirits, not wine. Last used, 223.20, um, several times a week. Um, the intake screening also includes a history of violence towards others, yes. So we're, there's no psychiatric treatment records for treatment for trauma. Any of the recognized trauma um, sim, uh, diagnoses in the DSM-5, PTSD, or any of the other trauma uh, symptoms that can be diagnosed, there's no records of any, any treatment of that. Um, it's just the anxiety, uh, which, having read the expert depositions, I'm sure you understand that that was pre-existing um, before the jail. So our objection is we don't understand the relevance of, of these records. They do not go to her subjective state of mind on February 23rd, 2020. They do not go to help us understand whether somebody in her position was objectively reasonable on February 23rd, 2020. And quite frankly, most of it's just embarrassing and irrelevant. And it would bog the jury down, much like 487 pages of Jorge Torres's records. There's just a lot of COVID screenings and, and blood test results. And it, it's, we, we struggle to see the relevance, Judge. Thank you. Response? Judge, it's similar to the state about 10 days ago, sending me over 500 pages. We addressed that yesterday. That's not germane to the issue. As soon as I got the medical records, I sent them to the state. He mentions anxiety was pre-existing. Now, that's not what their expert, Dr. Werner, opined in her deposition, that the anxiety she may be suffering from at the jail was from being in the jail. So there are questions about that. But generally, you get these records, as you, as you know, um, when you have a forensic psychologist that's trying to evaluate a patient. What is the relevance of these, of these records? What do COVID tests have to do with anything in this case? What do blood tests have to do with anything in this case? If they don't, then what of these 382 rec records, 382 pages of records are relevant? I'm trying to tell you. What specifically is relevant? What page? Dr. What date? What document? You're not answering my question, Counselor. I didn't say we were going to introduce these records. They are listed on your exhibit list. The state is taking the position that these may be sought to be entered into evidence. I don't intend on introducing these exhibits, this exhibit into evidence. I intend on potentially the doctors, the experts, Dr. Warner, Dr. Harper, to rely on these records. The depositions of all three doctors predate their request for these records. So it's pretty unclear whether any of these experts have already reviewed these records. Now we're going to have to address when do I get to depose uh, their doctor, Dr. Harper, um, if uh, she has not reviewed these records yet. When do I get to depose her? Who's going to pay for the expedited cost for the transcripts? What relevance is it to her if she hasn't reviewed these records? They got these records post deposition, post evaluation, the last date um, that I believe she saw Ms. Boone was September 30th or October 1st. And then we took her deposition either the first or the second. So this is also a problem, even if it's just going to be relied upon um, and not introduced. And I, I appreciate them letting us know that they don't seek to introduce these records into evidence, because of course, Experts can rely on inadmissible evidence if within the course of that area of expertise It's the type of evidence that's routinely relied upon But how are how are these records relied upon if 
They acquired them after we've done all the depositions. Now, Dr. Harper did say that she relied upon some jail records during her deposition. State didn't have those at the time. I don't know what, what the date span is of the records that she did review at the time of her deposition. So now we have new issues uh, to confront. Um, and we would like to know whether or not their experts have been provided these new records so that we can address that. Mr. Owens? Judge, I don't want to delay the trial. I'll, I'll wait. I will not have Dr. Harper reviewed. So she has not yet reviewed these yet, correct? Okay. No, I'll, I'll, I don't want to get in a situation where we're going to take another deposition. So I'll, I'll wait. I'll, I will not have her reviewed. Okay. State with. That was the only purpose. Okay. okay. So state understanding that tactical decision and that Ms. Dr. Harper is not reviewed and seemingly will not be relying upon these experts, does that cure any concerns that you have? Yes, sir. All right. Um, then based on counsel's representation, the court's not going to sustain or overrule the objection as the def this defense has identified they are not going to be seeking any of these 382 pages into evidence. Moving now to 8, 9, 10, and 11, there's no issue with regard to the body cam footage, but there is as to the police report itself. What is your response to that, Mr. Owens? Judge, the arrest reports are not listed as evidence in itself, but the reports may be used to refresh the officer's memory if needed during their testimony. Okay. Does that cure that understanding? Yes. Okay. All right. So based on Mr. Owens's representation as those items will not be sought to be moved into evidence or received into evidence, but only for the purposes of refreshing a recollection, the objection is um, uh, not sustained nor overruled as they're not going to be sought to be entered into evidence. Moving to Exhibit 17. No, I'm sorry. 16. 16 is a repeat of 11, so the court's going to adopt its. Or, uh, similarly, with with, re that to, with regard to that exhibit, um, Mr. Owens, are you only going to be seeking the uh, the arrest report for the purposes of refreshing? Yes. Sir. Okay. So court same ruling with regard to exhibit 16 as with 9, 10, and 11. Moving to 17, the jail calls involving defendant and third parties. Uh, state anything else to add other than your written. Objection. No, Your Honor. Response. The defendant is, is not intending to introduce the jail calls. Okay. The objection is sustained. 18, prior criminal history of George Torres not yet received by the defense. Has the state received that? Other than the arrest history that has resulted in interaction with the state attorney's office, um, we have not. Um, he's not a testifying witness. Um, so obviously, you know, we have to provide if they can't get it through due diligence, rap sheets of, of witnesses, um, but he's not a witness. Um, so we have not done anything other than had discussions about the prior interactions with the state attorney's office. Okay. Response, Mr. Owens. Judge, we're referring to the prior record involving Sarah that Sarah's aware of. Okay. I know he had some priors in um, Pennsylvania and I'm just trying to understand, are they seeking to introduce some sort of paper, or is this just the broad notification that Ms. Boone, when she testifies, will be <coughs> testifying about any prior incident of violence that she, she wants to um, regarding the decedent, because you can't rebut it. What is it? Is this oral testimony? Because this is an exhibit list, so that's my confusion. Because if it's oral testimony, that may be a different critter once the overt act is established under Holland. Judge, she's going to testify to it, and then um, it kind of ties into that 
that evidence being used to refresh the officer's testimony. Your officer's testimony, we believe, is going to cooperate. Sarah Lee's testimony about her injuries, photographs, of the officer visibly observing injuries on her. That, that's the nature of this. So I, I don't think there is going to be anything about a, a prior criminal history other than what she's testifying to. Okay, so there's not going to be any documentary or physical evidence that's provided, informations, charging affidavits, a criminal history report, anything tangible that's going to be offered to establish that criminal history other than Ms. Boone's testimony? Is that your position? Yes, unless there's some dispute about that, uh, that we have to cooperate and ask the court to take some judicial notice that there was a, a case file that was set up handle that criminal prosecution. Okay. Mr. J? I don't know that papers generated by a government agency is relevant. Um, and the disposition of the papers that were generated by some government agency is relevant. What's relevant is if there is an overt act that gets testified to um, prior instances of violence by, by the decedent um, that she is aware of. That doesn't open the door to hearsay. That doesn't open the door to any of these things that he seems to be referring to, whether it's criminal rap sheets, which is what I believed he was referring to, or police reports, or state attorney records of no bills, or I don't know. Based on his last statement, I don't know what we're talking about now, but we do have hearsay objections to, I thought we were talking about physical exhibits. And that's what our objection would be to believing that what that was represented was a criminal rap sheet. Judge Part of Battered Spouse Syndrome and Dr. Brennan will testify. I assume Dr. Harmon will testify about it. Dr. Warren will testify. Is, is this feeling by a victim of being battered that she has nowhere to turn? Um, that her family can't help her. She has in the group. The state attorney dropped three of the charges. Three separate times, George Torres was arrested, charged with violence against Sarah Boone. And her request, she wanted to drop. That's part of the syndrome. But in addition, in her mind, she felt like the state attorney had let her down. They could not, uh, they dropped three of the cases. So she felt helpless that there was some outside entity that would protect her. That ties into her state of mind as to whether or not she felt an imminent threat at the time of this event. So that may become relevant depending on what Dr. Harper says, Dr. Warren says about that, what Dr. Brandon says about that, as to whether or not she felt helpless because the state attorney's office was not uh, prosecuting George Torres when she was the victim. But, but that all sounds like oral testimony. And again, this goes back to this is an exhibit list. What are the exhibits, tangible, physical? We may, we, may, we may want to introduce something in a court record indicating that the state attorney dismissed the case. Okay. How, how does, what does that have to do with prior criminal history? Because that's the topic here. Prior criminal history of George Torres Jr. not yet received by the defense. That's the line item in your exhibit list. I will withdraw the prior criminal history. Okay. All right. So based on counsel's representation of the withdraw, the... Uh, court will not sustain or grant the objection. Does that clarify that for you, Mr. J? Thank you. All right. Moving now to 19, uh, Orange County Sheriff's Office investigative workup report. Response. That's be used to refresh the officer's memory, if need be, during their testimony. Okay. With that understanding, Mr. J? Yes, I'm not, I'm not clear what a workup report is, but I, if... If it's not sought to be introduced into evidence, then I, I will accept that representation. Okay. So accepted. Your objections overruled based on counsel's representation. Uh, the investigative report workup will not be offered into evidence, but merely for refreshing. Uh, moving to 21, all court orders in all Orange County criminal cases regarding George Torres. State. Any further argument? I believe we went from 19 to 21 without addressing 20. Oh, I apologize. I had the wrong, I color coded this and I miscolor color coded this one. Okay, then based on counsel's representation of withdrawing that, 
The court will not uh, rule on that objection. Moving to 21, uh, anything further? Because it's kind of, we kind of address this as well with number 19. Anything further argument state? Okay. Anything further um, argument? Yes. Okay. I'm going to overrule the objection as to, at, at as this point in time, because if a declination of prosecution may have been filed, that may be relevant based on Ms. Boone's testimony. So I'm going to overrule your objection at this time, assuming the overt act concept is placed into evidence. Moving to 22, family law case file Boone v. Boone, case number 2017 DR01660-O. I understand the state's objection as to relevance and hearsay response. Judge, uh, Brian Boone, we anticipate, is going to testify for the state. He testified for the defense, and he may be considered an adverse witness or hostile witness, and so we may attempt to establish either bias on his part based on some of the documents or orders in the court record, and, or, or we may reflect for impeachment purposes the fact that he has not complied with some of the orders, and that he, the reason being is because of his feelings for the defendant, you know, he's now got full custody of their son and, and has had full custody for four and a half years. That was not the agreement they originally had, and he's, he was ordered to pay out loan, uh, which he has failed to do as a result of her being incarcerated. So there's litigation going on. Brian uh, Boone has counsel, Sarah Boone does not, and that force of their... What does the, what is the non-payment of alimony? <laughs> have to do with what's happening in a family case? Well, that, Judge, that goes to uh, his, his testimony, that goes to his credibility, whether or not he can be impeached, that uh, her in the position that she's in now, uh, he, he's biased. And to show that he's biased, that he has not paid out long for He's supposed to pay $1,000 a month for a number of years, and he's just failed to comply with the court's order. That shows Personal bias or feelings towards it. Response? Sounds like this is ongoing pending litigation that has not been decided by a circuit court judge on Ninth Circuit's family division. And I can certainly understand why one may believe they don't need to pay alimony when their spouse is incarcerated. Uh, I can certainly understand why somebody may believe they don't need to pay child support when their spouse is incarcerated. Um, and they would probably want to seek legal redress about those issues. And it sounds like it's all ongoing. Are, are there any orders from the court in that case addressing the non-payment of alimony and that being contemptuous or in violation of any court order? No. Uh, they, they were divorced. I think there was a marital settlement agreement that was attached to the final order. Uh, Brian Boone did open the case back up uh, to move the child to Gainesville, which has happened. And then my understanding is there's still some issues. I think she was given some kind of a notice of a hearing coming up. She's not represented. I don't represent her. Is there, so if there's no order in the court file finding there's a violation of an order to pay alimony, what is? Well, there's a final order about his, his obligation to pay alimony. And I think if he gets on the stand, I'm going to ask him, but you, you haven't paid her alimony like you were ordered to do so. I can go into under cross examination. But it sounds like there's pending litigation, including uh -huh. a relocation, or and I don't know because that's not that, my case. I haven't decided. looked at it. That's been decided. He hasn't been able to relocate. I don't. I don't know all the ramifications. I'll look at the court file. I think we had subpoenaed the custodian of the records of the court file. I'll look at it and I'll let the court know and the state know. Can you all approach just for a moment? Arguments and. I right, thank you all both for your arguments and clarifications based on the court's going to overrule the objection at this time for the reasons discussed at sidebar. Moving now to 23, the policies and procedures of the Orange County Sheriff's Office regarding Miranda. Have those been received, been received by you, um, Mr. Owens? 
Yes, sir. Okay. I'm no longer seeking to introduce those. Okay. All right. Uh, based on counsel's representation, the court takes no action on the state's objection. Same with 24. Uh, based on that representation, court takes no action. Moving to 25, records from Tealwood Park Apartments. Judge, we, we, didn't, we never received what we wanted. Uh, we're, we're not seeking to introduce that. Okay. Based on counsel's representation uh, of not seeking to utilize it, court takes no action on that objection. Moving to 27. 26, the defense does not intend to introduce any of the 911 calls. Okay, all right, thank you. Moving to 27, the video footage of the arrest on February 25, 2020. It, the defense has not received that. The state may have it in their possession. It appears there's news footage of Sarah Boone in handcuffs being escorted. State, do you have such an item in your possession? News footage? No. Not that I know of. Um, all right, but we have not received it, so we don't have the evidence. Okay, all right. Based on it not being received, uh, court's going to sustain the objection. Moving to 29, the iPhone photo file name. Not going to read it, it's very long. Judge, I do not intend to introduce 29. Okay. And court takes no action based on counsel's representation. Moving to 32, iPhone photo. I need. Mean, um, yeah, I'm sorry, sir. 29, what is the ruling? Uh, there is none, as the defense has advised, they are not seeking to enter it into evidence. 32, another iPhone photo file name. It's very long, so I'm not going to read it. This does not intend to introduce. Okay. As such, the court will not take any action on that objection. 33, another iPhone photo file name. The court's not going to read it because it is too long. Defense does not intend to introduce. Based on counsel's representation, court takes no action on the objection. Moving to 48, another iPhone photo file name, 505 period JPG underscore embedded underscore one underscore 772. We would stipulate. All right, the objection is sustained based on stipulation. Moving to 59 and 60. I understand your objection state. Any response? Any and all exhibits previously listed by the state? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Judge, Mr. J is a smart lawyer with a lot of experience. He's board certified. He's filed. Um, this motion in limiting to disallow the battered spouse syndrome twice. And yesterday, uh, we were forced to disclose the overt act that constituted um, our defense that tied in with the self-defense. And so, tactically, he was able to get us to that posture so he knows um, our defense and how we're coming at it. The problem is the state has not been forced to give the details of what they allege Sarah Boone's overt acts or non-acts. I need to, to clarify something. There was no forcing yesterday. The court reviewed Dr. Harper's deposition and there was no overt act that she had testified to. She was specifically inquired about any imminent fear, and there, were, there was no response to those questions. The well, word overt act did not appear in any of the four or five sessions that she had with Ms. Boone. And state was seeking, as we addressed yesterday in Lemony, to prohibit that. I disagree with that. That was his deposition. He tried to control the witness. He kept cutting her off. He wouldn't let her finish explaining. I certainly wasn't going to do it. Uh, she's going to testify in trial about it. Um, it's not my fault that he, he felt like he got it, the answer he wanted and he moved on. He didn't ask for any elaboration about that. Uh, but that's going to come out. But I understand that's all you had. But we had to do that. The state has not had to do that. And I understand under the Sixth Amendment that we have a right, the accused has a right 
to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation. And the problem with that boilerplate information is we don't know what they're claiming that she actually did, overt act or omission, that constituted second-degree murder. Uh, so because of that, we have to list everything because we don't know. It's like he wants to know. He wants the court to make rulings so that he can tweak his opening statement based on the court. The same with us. We don't know how to respond to their opening until they give it because we don't understand the full nature of what they're alleging Sarah Boone did to constitute second-degree murder. So in an abundance of caution, we've got to list everything that may be relevant, but we don't know yet because we haven't heard. I, I would like to renew, they've renewed their motion on battered spouse, I would like to remo renew my motion for a statement of particulars so that I could know, the defense team could know what it is exactly that the state attorney is alleging that Sarah did or did not do that constitutes second degree murder. It's a serious charge. This is not, it's a unique case. It, it's not something that happens every day. And that's why we believe that it was proper under that rule of a statement of particular so that we could be informed about what it is exactly that they claim that she did criminal so that we could prepare a defense. And it goes to directly to this point, which is they want to know why we want these documents and what documents specifically are y'all going to use. Well, it's difficult to tell when we don't know what we're accused of. Any response, Mr. Jay? Yes, sir. Mr. Owens, Mr. Cacciatore, myself, and Dr. Werner all sat together within five feet of Sarah Boone the first week of October and heard the final version. It's not very dissimilar from the version of Dr. Harper, but Dr. Werner's deposition was provided to the court uh, previously for our motion to eliminate. I don't understand the position they're taking that they were forced to, sh to show their cards when David Cacci Dave Cacciatore and myself and Mr. Owens and Dr. Werner were all there together to hear her version. And her version is, it was all fun and games, it was Sunday fun day, he gets into the suitcase, we're all laughing, I zip it shut, we're still laughing. There comes a point in time when he says, I can't breathe. This triggers her based on her past abuse, no overt act that day. And she begins violently doing the things to the suitcase that she says she did, whacking him with the baseball bat on his fingers, and now, after being the initial aggressor, now after having committed a forcible felony or two, now after having put Mr. Torres in a reasonable uh, fear of death or great bodily harm, she says, well, she realizes now if he gets out after these things that I've done to him, uh, I'm in big trouble. Um, and it's my understanding that we have had this discussion and that if that is the proffered testimony, that that is not going to uh, amount to an overt act, which will allow for reputation evidence, past incidents, incidents of violence, or the battered spouse syndrome evidence. The, they weren't forced to show their hand. I, I, was, I was there. The rules of criminal procedure allowed me and Mr. Cacciatore to be there and to witness this evaluation. So that being said, we're not abusing the system. We're not doing anything that we're not allowed to do. And we're making every effort to make sure that we understand how this trial is going to go down and how they, and Ms. Boone understands how the trial is going to go down. Because my understanding of how it's going to go down is she's going to have to testify to the specific events of that day. And right up when she comes to the point to saying, and when he said, I can't breathe, 
the state attorney, Mr. Jay, is going to object. He's going to ask to approach. He's going to say, Judge, there's been no change in your testimony, unless there is. Then that's a whole different bag of worms. But if there's been no change in your testimony, Judge, we, we got a ruling prior to this that there's been no overt act testified to. Now we're going to object to her answer of because of the past violence, and we're going to object to any further attempt to bring in prior violence, reputation evidence, or battered spouse evidence. I just want everybody to be clear and on the same page about that. Now, in regards to their request, uh, a renewed request for a statement of particulars, they've had the discovery for several years. This is the state's case. A video that starts at 11, 12, 45 p.m. on 2-23-2020. Sarah, for everything you've done to me. Sarah, for everything you've done to me. Sarah, F you, laughter. Sarah, F you, laughter. Sarah, stupid. Sarah, that's my name. Don't wear it out. Sarah, I can't F and breathe, baby, seriously. Yeah, that's what you do when you choke me. Sarah, 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 laughter. Sarah, I can't breathe, babe, laughter. That's on you. Sarah, I can't breathe, laughter. That's on you. Sarah, unintelligible drunken slurred words, laughter. Sarah, 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 I can't breathe, baby. That's what I feel like when you cheat on me. Sarah, F you. I can't F and breathe, Sarah. You should probably shut the F up. Sarah, shh. That's our case. That is an advanced, depraved mind conscious disregard for whether he lives or dies, whether she put him in there or not, she, she let him remain for two minutes during that video. And then at 11.23.03 p.m., there's another 22-second video, and it just zooms in on the suitcase. Sarah. So that is a second-degree murder case when the medical examiner comes in and says, Jorge Torres, George Torres, died from positional asphyxiation and the asphyxiation from being in a confined space. And eventually, after Lord knows how many breaths, he expired in that suitcase when she went upstairs and went to bed. But in addition to those statements, we now have her new statements, which are she intentionally violently shook the suitcase, threw it upside down, hit it with a bat, hit him with a bat, and committed independent forcible felonies. And that's going to be corroborated by the medical examiner's testimony to all the blunt force trauma to both sides of his face and his mouth. That is a second degree murder case. That is what we're going to be presenting. This is a portion of what I will be telling the jury this afternoon. Any rebuttal? I wanted that in writing weeks ago. She was assessed, Sarah Boone, the defendant, was assessed at the Orange County Jail a couple of weeks ago by Dr. Warner. Their rebuttal states that, sir. The characterization that Mr. J just gave about her testimony, I do not agree with. There was four of us there. Dr. Warner, five of us there. Dr. Warner, Sarah Boone, myself, and the two prosecutors. The mistake we made was not recording that assessment. Because I can't testify to what she said. The two prosecutors can't testify to what she said. The only two people that can testify to what she said is Dr. Werner and Sarah Boone. We dis dispute their characterization of what she said. That's just going to have to be testified to by Sarah Boone and then Dr. Warner. And jury, while we're here, they are going to have to decide. 
Who to believe? And what happened? But that is a jury question that we're all going to have to wait for. I appreciate the prosecutor giving me the evidence he intended to introduce to prove secondary murder. It was something I was asking for a couple of weeks ago. Thank you. For the same reasons that the court identified when we had the hearing on the original motion for particulars, the court relies on its same ruling in the case law identified at that time. The renewed or tennis motion for a statement of particulars is denied. The state's objections is to paragraph 59 and 60 are also overruled. Um, the only other issue to address then is the uh, Richardson violation. Court's going to take a short recess and we'll address that as promptly as possible. It is 5 till 11. I still intend on moving forward with jury selection this morning. We will be moving to 23, correct? Yes, sir. I'm just making sure I'm clear on 60. Our request was that prior to the testimony of any of the listed witnesses, which I listed only by initials, that we have the opportunity to depose them and we address the costs of expedited trans uh, transcripts. And I just want to make sure um, they meant to overrule that um, request. I, I, I apologize because I was just looking at what was articulated in the exhibit list, which was any and all relevant reciprocal discovery to be obtained through ongoing investigative efforts. What's your response, um, Mr. Owens, with regard to these persons identified in the state's objections who may be called in deposing them? Well, the state listed a bunch of witnesses on October 3rd. So if the court allows the state to do this and take the depositions, then we ought to be allowed to take the depositions of their witnesses they listed. Later. I believe those are the same witnesses that they've listed in regards to the prior incidents, um, the deputies that were went out on the call-outs and the cases that resulted in cases to the state attorney's office and 911 dispatchers. Okay. Is that accurate, Mr. Owens, that ex October 3 states list? Well, yeah, we don't dispute that they should be allowed to depose them, but they've been listed by both parties, whereas these people are unilaterally listed by the defendant. Judge, again, I'm not complaining. I've been on the case 45 days as we have gotten witnesses or found witnesses, Billy Lane or whoever else was trying to locate him on my team, we have tried to disclose them. Based on what Sarah Boone has asked us, I want this witness, I want this witness, we've made attempts to comply with her request. Whether or not we're going to call them, the law says, uh, the case law says, you know, Sarah Boone has a right to trial, Sarah Boone has a right to testify, Sarah Boone has a right to appeal. I believe those are the three fundamentals. But the defense lawyer makes the decision about which witnesses to call. So although she may want some witnesses, she's asked us to find them and list them and locate them, which we've done. That doesn't mean that I have to call them. And it may not, uh, we may not call many of those that she wants to, but I believe my right to do that and to present our defense with our witnesses is paramount. And she does not have the right. Okay, thank you. All right, court's going to take a brief recess to address this and the Richardson violations. We'll be in a short recess. Thank you. All right, we're back on the record. Case number 2020, CF 2603, State of Florida versus Sarah Boone. State, appearances for the record. Chief Judge Schroeder, behalf of the state. William J. Defense. Oh, James Owens for Sarah Boone. Tony Henderson for Sarah Boone. All right, Ms. Boone is seated at council's table wearing the same clothing from earlier this morning. All right, it is 1124. With regard to the Richardson hearing with regard to item six in the defendant's fifth amended reciprocal discovery list the court is going to reserve and have that hearing tomorrow morning at 9 a.m defense is to provide an edited version of only the records that pertain to anxiety or their lack of that thereof to the state before 9 a.m tomorrow morning judge number six was secured by agreement okay did that happen when i was not here no, it happened earlier while we were here. Then what specifically was the Richardson violation for then, if it wasn't for number six? And I apologize. Number two was the 119 
the new JPEG pages uh, reporting to be from Lunar Park Advent Health, and they're a little bit different than the 81 pages that I previously received. Okay. So the ruling remains the same. Court's going to reserve, address the Richardson hearing tomorrow, and you were to provide an edited version of those records that you seek to offer into evidence. Mr. Owens, by, on or before 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Regarding the uh, paragraph number two, regarding the Winter Park Advent Health Records, the uh, 119 that we gave him this morning. That is correct, sir. With regard to the witnesses that have been identified by the defense in paragraph 60 of the state's response, Those witnesses will be excluded if not deposed prior to being called as witnesses, and the defense shall pay for any and all expedited transcripts. All right, Judge, the same as you should apply to them. There were three people that they gave us late that we didn't have before, Rachel Fenner, Meredith McCaskill, and Victoria Shelton. State response. Meredith McCaskill is an FDLE uh, analyst that is substituting for an analyst that um, is unavailable during the trial period. So in an effort to not continue the case, um, we've got a substitute analyst. So that's our reason for the late disclosure on her. And who are the other two? Rochelle Fenner and Victoria Shelton. And those are the 911 dispatchers. Um, if, if we end up having to call them, then that, that's fine. We will pay for the expedited transcripts. And what I would expect uh, will not be lengthy nor expensive. Okay. Has the FDLE analyst that was originally set to testify been deposed in this matter? Mr. Cachetori does not believe that uh, the defendant ever deposed that person. Okay. Any other positions, Mr. Owens? Okay. All right. Uh, state will afford the same opportunity to the defense as provided by the state to the defense. Court's going to be in recess. It's 1127. Um, hang on. Your number. Yes, let me address that. Can I have the, the thing again, please? If you all still have yesterday's um, sheets from jury selection, Madam Clerk has advised that jury services has told us the juror in seat 25 wearing badge 63 called. Sick child? The nephew that she cares for is ill and that she is not here due to caring for that child. He is not here due to caring for that child. State's response, if any. Four cause. So stipulated, juror number 25 wearing badge 63 uh, will be struck for cause. We'll advise the jury services to call them and tell them they do not need to report. Um, with regard to the or tennis motion as to Ms. Boone's request for snacks, the or tennis motion is denied. Ms. Boone is being provided all the same services as to any other inmate being transported for the purposes for trial. Anything else we need to address state before we report back to 23 at 1 p.m.? Defense? No, sir. All right, we'll see you all at 1 p.m. Thank you very much. Court's off the record.